quiet program created by the Rio Grande Oil Company. Calling all cars, attention all cars. Calling San Mateo County Sheriff's cars, broadcast 78. Father Patrick Heslin of the Coma Parish is missing. All cars be on the lookout for this man. That's all. Tonight, Rio Grande presents an outstanding Northern California police case. And this is an opportune time for Rio Grande to express appreciation to Northern California motorists for their enthusiastic reception of cracked gasoline. Only nine months have passed since cracked gasoline was first introduced in Northern California. Yet in Northern California alone, it has been necessary for Rio Grande to build 19 new gasoline wholesale distributing plants to supply the demand. Sales and distribution have made spectacular increases. Thousands of motorists, curious to know what Rio Grande's exclusive cracking process does to gasoline, have experienced the thrill of police car performance in their own car. And now, ordinary gasoline failed to satisfy them. Among these many thousands of new users, Rio Grande is proud to list many of the leading cities in Northern California, which have officially adopted the same cracked gasoline specified by so many cities and counties wherever Rio Grande cracked gasoline is marketed. Today, it is more true than ever before that wherever it is sold, Rio Grande cracked gasoline powers more police cars, fire engines, ambulances, and other emergency equipment than any other brand. And now it is our pleasure to introduce Sheriff James J. McGrath of San Mateo County, who will speak to you from the studios of station KFRC in San Francisco. Sheriff McGrath. gentlemen, the problem of crime prevention and deterrence is one of cooperation here in the San Francisco Bay District. It is rarely that a crime concerns only the officers of one community, for our cities are so close together here that invariably the criminal attempts to escape or hide away in a neighboring community. So we Bay District enforcement officers have had to learn the lesson of cooperation. In the case you are about to hear, Although the crime was committed in my jurisdiction and the body discovered in San Mateo County, the invaluable persistence of the San Francisco police ran down the criminal and turned him over to us. Once we had the suspect in custody, then our work of developing the case against him began. Together, the San Francisco officers and the men of the San Mateo Sheriff's Office were able to build a powerful case which sent the prisoner to San Quentin for life. the night. I want to speak to Father Hesler. And why can't you come back tomorrow? The father is in his study. Very important. i got to see him. And what's it about? A friend of mine. He's, he's dying. He's asking somebody to, to pray over him. Extraction, he calls it. Well, why didn't you say so? Just a minute and I'll be calling Father Heslin. Don't be too much. I heard it. Hurry, Father. I had much more time to live. Very well. Just as soon as I get into my coat. Oh, not so very far, Father, but, but hurry. Yeah. Yeah. 
Now I'm all ready. I'll have a cup of tea brewing for you when you get back, Father. <laughs> Father Heflin does not return for his cup of tea that night, and the following morning in the study of the Archbishop of San Francisco. Please pardon the interruption, Your Grace, but I think I should call this message to your attention. What is it? It carries no signature, and it's typewritten. It reads, Your Grace, if the Mother Church ever wants the services of Father Heflin again, you must pay me $6,500. He's unconscious now, and if you refuse to pay this amount... Father Heston will be done away with, and you'll never even find his body to give him decent burial. Don't mention this letter to anyone, and don't try to notify the police. Get the money, and I will send you another letter in a few days, telling you how you must pay the money. And here's a postscript written in ink. If you or the people you send with the money try to capture me, you will all be blown to pieces by an infernal machine. Oh, may God have pity on such a miserable sinner. What are we to do? Well, perhaps it is a practical joke some thoughtless person is playing on it. I hope so. Uh, never mind, I'll answer it. Hello? Yes? He didn't return last night? I see. Yes. Well, don't worry, my daughter. Yes, I'll take care of it. Goodbye. Uh, it is no joke, brother. That was Father Hesman's housekeeper. And he did not return home last night. God preserve him. With the news of the abduction of the Colma Parish priest, public indignation flares. The citizens of Colma offer $1,000 for information leading to the arrest and conviction of Father Hesman's abductors. Priests of the San Francisco Diocese offered a reward of $5,000 for the return of Father Heston, dead or alive. San Mateo County adds a $1,000 reward for information concerning the kidnappers. And in a cheap hotel in San Francisco sits a man poring over the screaming headlines, thinking aloud. $7,000 reward? <laughs> Better than $6,500 ransom. <laughs> Far better. $500 better. <laughs> so a week after Father Heston's disappearance, an itinerant baker appears at the San Francisco Police Headquarters. What do you want? I want to speak to the captain. Cap's busy. What can I do for you? I've got to speak to the captain direct. Oh, what about? You'll have to state your business. Why, well, I, I got a tip on the kidnapping of Father Hislin. Oh, oh, that's different. Wait a minute. I beg pardon, Captain. There's a man out here who says he knows something about the disappearance of the coma priest. Show him in. Yes, sir. Right this way. Thanks. Well, good afternoon. Have a seat. Uh, thanks. Now, what is it? I know all about Father Heslin. Yes? Yes. He's dead. What? Yeah. Dead and buried. Where is he buried? Out in the sand dune to Salada. Near a flapjack sign with a miner on it. Do I get the reward? Now, wait a minute. Not so quick about the reward. How do you know this? Oh, a drunken foreigner told it to a girlfriend of mine at the corner of Ellison Mason the other night. That's what he said. Father Heslin is buried out in the dunes at Salada Beach. What's your name? William A. Hightower. What's the girl's name? I told you this. Uh, Ella. Yeah, yeah, that's her name. Ella Howard. Where does she live? I, I don't know. Now, where do you live? Oh, I, at the Tenbo Hotel. Did I get the reward? Well, we'll see about that after we've checked your story. Oh, my story's straight, all right. Come along with me and I'll show you. You will lead us to the grave? Sure. You'll give me the reward. Well, nobody else has claimed it so far, and that's all I can say now. <laughs> Accompanied by newspaper reporters, the officers follow Hightower out to the lonely Salada Dunes. For a half mile, they trudge through the deep sand. And then, as they approach the beach... Hey, there's a sign with a miner on it. Is this the place? Yeah. If you dig here, you'll find him, according to the foreigner. Hold that pose pointing like that, Mr. Hightower. I want to get a picture. Thanks. Okay, boys, start digging. What did this foreigner look like, Mr. Hightower? Oh, I didn't talk to him, you understand, but 
But Ella said that she was too short and, and dark and, and drunk. That's not much of a description. Well, you know how women are. They don't notice much. Not my wife. She can see a blonde hair on my coat a half block away. <laughs> the devil just hit something, Captain. Hey, listen, go easy then, boy. There he is. That's the priest, all right. Well, give us a hand while we get him out of this hole here. Okay, Captain. Okay, now let's get over here. Yeah, put your hands under there. Yeah, I got it. All right, now up you go. That's right. right. That's right. All right, easy. Lay him over here. Right. All right. Well, a fractured skull. Apparently hit by some blunt instrument. Here's a bullet hole in his body, Captain. Hey, they sure did for him, didn't they? Yes, Mr. Hightower, they did. <laughs> Hightower is kept in technical custody for questioning regarding the murder. Newspaper reporters thronging over the site of the grave make a discovery. Got enough shots to the place, Ben? Yeah, I guess so. We better get back to town if we're going to make the bulldog. Yeah, let's go. Hey, wait a minute. What? Here are a couple of tent stakes by the grave. Well, what of it? Maybe nothing. But look at this fish line tied around one of them. And here's a timber with fish lines tied around it in the same kind of knot. Yeah, that's not mysterious. Maybe not, and then again, maybe it's a clue. Oh, you've been reading too many Sherlock Holmes stories. Well, just the same, I'm going to take them in and turn them over to the police. <laughs> Meanwhile, back at headquarters... Well, Captain, I... I turned you to the body... I get the $7,000 reward now? What's your hurry, Mr. Hightower? A few questions I'd like to ask you. Sure. If there are any questions you like, but I've already told you everything I know. Well, not everything. Where were you on the night of August 2nd? Uh, August 2nd? Yes. The night that Father Heston was summoned from his home. Why, Captain, you don't think I have anything to do with this, do you? Well, I'm asking the questions. Where were you on that night? Why, uh, on the night of August 2nd, I, I was out riding with a lady friend of mine. We... We drove down to San Jose, in fact. How are you so sure of the date? Oh, I just remember. It was a week ago yesterday. Oh. What was the lady's name? Edith Stanley. Where does she live? The Berkshire Hotel. Edith Stanley, Berkshire Hotel. Whose car did you ride in? Uh, I rented it. Where? Oh, at Tommy Carroll's garage on, on Golden Gate Avenue. I see. Just a minute, please. Send in Martin and Brannigan. Yes, sir. Bring in Edith Stanley, who lives at Berkshire Hotel. Yes, sir. And Brannigan, you check with Tommy Carroll's garage and whether Mr. Hightower rented an automobile there on the 2nd of August. And, uh, oh, yes. Tell Kelly to take a man and search Mr. Hightower's room at the Tenbo Hotel. Yes, sir. Now, look here, Captain. You think you're exceeding your authority? I do not. Is there anything else you want to ask me? Well, not for the moment. I'm free to go. You are not. You're still in technical custody until I check your story. Detective Martin searches for Edith Stanley, and Brannigan checks with the garage. Detective Kelly and his partner search Hightower's room. Well, let's see what's in this closet. Looks like a tent. Help me get it out of here. Here. Look. Stand on it. And tuberculosis written across the side. What the devil do you suppose that's for? It's me. I think we'd better take it in. All right. Anything else in there? Yeah, funny-looking box. Look. Let me see. Looks like a bomb of some sort to me. Better be careful with it. Say, there's a rifle in the corner. Yeah, and look over here at this desk. A twenty-two pistol and some shells from a forty-five automatic. And Father Heston was shot with a forty-five. Well, it looks like we're getting somewhere, partner. It sure does. Only watch how you handle that box. I don't like the looks of it. here by the name of Edith Stanley? No, she checked out. When did she check out? On the 3rd of August. On the 3rd of August. Where'd she go? I don't know. Ah, uh, don't give me a run around. I'm from police headquarters. Oh, oh, that's different. You see, she told me not to give out her new address. Okay, but you're going to give it to me. Well, she, she moved around the corner to the Alcatraz. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> William A. 
high tower rent a car here on August 2nd. High tower, high tower. Let me look through the book. Yes, oh, of course, I remember him. He left some tent poles here. Tent poles? What for? Well, ask me to take care of them. How long did he have the car? Well, he took it out around 6 o'clock and brought it back around 2 a.m. What kind of a car was it? Ford. That's fine. Mind showing me those tent poles? All right. Well, they're Mr. Hightower's property. I, I don't think I should. I'm from Central Station. I'm going to take these tent poles in for evidence. <laughs> Just to be sure, I brought the stakes in with me, Captain. Here they are. Well, ten stakes aren't unusual things to find on the beach. You know, lots of people camp out. Yeah, I suppose it was foolish of me. No, I appreciate your interest, and I'll keep them around in case they tie in with anything. Oh, hello, Kelly. What you find in Hightower's room? Plenty. A rifle, a twenty-two revolver, and some forty-five shells. Forty-five shells? Yep, and a suspicious-looking box. Eddie took it under the ballistics man. But here's the one thing we found that doesn't make sense. Hey, what's that? Look. A tent with the word tuberculosis written on the side. Hey, let me see that. Look, Captain. There's some of that same fish line tied through this ring here. And it's tied in the same knot as on these stakes. Hey, Gully, you're right. There's sand on the tent, too. Harry, those stakes you brought in are an important link. I'm glad you reporters make yourself useful sometimes. Yeah, what do you mean, sometimes? Where'd you coppers be without us? Well, sometimes, I wonder. Well, Captain, I got rented a car from Carroll, all right. About between 6 in the evening and 2 a.m. Fine. What the devil are you carrying? Oh, these? There's some tent poles he left with Carroll. Well, I'd bring them in. I'd come in handy. They do. Now, boys, we're getting somewhere. We got the stakes, the poles, on the tent, which is pitched by Father Hetland's grave. All we need is a frying pan. We can go camping. Need circumstantial evidence, Captain, but don't forget Hightower's alibi. Don't worry. We'll check on that. Well, Kelly, it was an infernal machine, all hey, right. Hey, hey, don't point it at no. me. Don't worry. The ballistics man took the shells out of it. An infernal machine, huh? Is that the one you found in Hightower's room? Yes, sir. It was rigged with ten shotgun shells to go off when you release the trigger. And a ransom note threatened Archbishop Hanna with an infernal machine if he didn't come across. Uh, hello? Yeah? Fine, yeah, bring her in. Well, yeah, that's Martin. He's got Hightower's alibi with him. Mind if I stay while you question her, Captain? No, I owe you something for those ten stakes. Thanks. Right this way, Miss Stanley. Captain, this is Miss Stanley. Uh, how do you do? Won't you be seated, Miss Stanley? Thanks. Uh, have a cigarette. No, thanks. Miss Stanley, are you acquainted with a William Hightower? Yeah. Did you see him on the evening of August 2nd, uh, that is, a week ago yesterday? Yeah, that's the last time I saw him. You said that you went on an automobile ride with him to San Jose that night. Is that true? It is not. But you did see him that night. Yeah. What were the circumstances under which you saw him? He called for me about 6 o'clock and drove me downtown. What that's did you all. do for the rest of the evening? I had dinner by myself, went to a movie, and came back to the hotel and went to bed. And then about... Two o'clock in the morning, Mr. Hightower came up to the room. He wanted to talk to me. He said I wouldn't let him in. She moved five times during the past five days, Captain. That's good to explain that. I had to follow her to five different hotels. I was trying to get away from Hightower. I'm engaged to be married to another fella. Mr. Hightower kept running after me. That night, after he tried to make me let him in at two in the morning, I made up my mind to hide from him. I knew I'd get into trouble if I had anything to do with that guy. Now look at the mess I'm in. Well, you're in no mess, Miss Stanley. We're not accusing you of anything. You can't, because I know. Well, you've convinced me of that. And you've been of great service to us. Oh, may I go now? Well, yes, but keep in touch with us in case we want to question you further. Very well, Captain. I will. All right, thank you, Miss Stanley. Good day, gentlemen. Bye, Miss. Good night. Well, there goes Hightower's alibi higher than a kite. Yeah, it looks like it. I'm going to put that guy where he belongs. Hello. Get me Constable uh, Landini of Colma. Thanks for letting me in on this, Captain. I got a flash to city room now, and I want to get a picture of that Stanley thing. Okay. Hello? Hello, Constable. Well, I've got the murderer of Father Heslin. Yeah. Sure, I got the evidence. Well, it's circumstantial, but it's sufficient to hold him to one's of a murder. Okay. And bring the warrant with you. On the 13th of August, Constable S.A. Landini formally charges William A. Hightower of the murder of Father Hesman. The suspect is moved to the San Mateo County Jail at Redwood City. 
where Sheriff Michael Sheehan questioned him further. When attacked about Hightower, we have enough on you to hang you. Now, why don't you make our job easier by confessing? Well, you might get off his life imprisonment. How can I confess to this murder when I didn't do it? He has Bobby the confession out of me. Uh, nobody's trying to browbeat you, Hightower. Has anyone laid a hand on you? No, but you would if you weren't afraid of my influence. I know you, cop. And you think that remark's a little silly? Now, look here. What were you doing camping out at Salada Beach? I wasn't camping out there. Oh, come on now. We have the tent stakes found at the grave. We have the tent found in your room with the same kind of knots, tied with the same cord. Why lie about it? Well, I have camped out there, yeah. Why? Well, the day of the fire in 1906, I had a trunk full of valuables out there in the dunes. I... I've been trying to find them ever since. I, I bought there sometimes for a couple of days and dig for them. That's a pretty weak story, don't you think, I tell That's the truth. All right. What about that word tuberculosis written on the side of the tent? Oh, oh that. That was to keep people away. I don't like people. To keep people away while well, you had the body of Father Hessel in the tent? I never had his body in the tent. Not even while you were digging the grave? No. I'm innocent. I know. Or you killed Father Hessel? No. no. You killed Father Hessel? Confess. Confess your sins. You killed Father Heslin. Now listen, I'm as smart as you are. You can't break me down. What do you have, the crooked up story? Hasn't anyone who can identify me? No. Wait a minute. All right. Have you ever seen this man before? Ah! That's him. He's the one who called for the father that night. He said that a friend of his was dying. That's him. Oh, you devil. You murderer. Thank you, Mary. That's all for a moment. Take her out, Sergeant. Well, hi, Tom. I paid witness. She never saw me before. She first said she said the man was a dark foreigner. Now she's changing her story. Do I look like a dark foreigner? In the shade of Father Heflin's porch at night, you might. Ah, uh, rubbish. Ah, uh, what's a dope, Sheriff? Trying to make a bid for re-election that you're so eager to railroad someone for this murder? That isn't even funny. So you won't confess? Well, I've nothing to confess to. I'm innocent. You know an awful lot about the location of Father Heflin's grave for an innocent man. I look here, Sheriff. Let me ask you this. Do you think I'd have led the office to that grave if I'd been guilty? You're a sufficiently shrewd man to think that your very daring would throw suspicion away from you. And, of course, there's the reward. Well, I acted with the best intentions as a law-abiding citizen. I tried to help the police, and now look at the fix I'm in. Why, why it's ridiculous. All I know about this whole thing is what that dark porter told... Told Ella Howard that at the corner of Ella's mission that night. Well, I'm willing to play with your story. I'll give you a break. Where's Ella Howard? I'll question her. Well, why question her? Find the dark foreigner. He, he's the man that murdered Father Heslin. Let's start with Ella Howard. What does she look like? Oh, well, she's, she's pretty. Blonde? I think so. Well, suppose we have a mug of her hair? She ever been arrested? Might have been. I wasn't too careful about the company she keeps. All right. Let's take a look through this book. Anything like her hair? These are forges. No, she ain't there. They're there. Well, let's look at the pickpocket. Was Ella Smith's purses? Yeah, she might. See her on this page? No. Turn over. All right. Hey, there she is. You sure? Yeah, positive. But this woman's name is Sally Lawrence. Well, Ella might have used an alias. Yeah, but you see, Hightower, here's where you're mistaken. Because Sally Lawrence, according to this record, is still in San Quentin. Oh, think she must have broken out. Oh, that won't do, Hightower. I'm going to send you back to your cell until you decide to come clean. I, I have come clean. I don't believe you. But I'll give you as much rope as you want. And I'm going out and get Ella Howard, if there is such a person. And I'm going to see what she has to say about the dark foreigner. <laughs> goes out to the Bay District Police to bring in Ella Howard, blonde and pretty. Finally, the enterprising newspaper reporter finds a blonde girl whose name is Ella Howard, working as a waitress in the Market Street restaurant. He telephones Sheriff Sheehan, plans a trap, and then drives the bewildered girl out the Bay Shore Highway to Redwood City. Say, look here, Mr. Buckley. I don't get what this is all about. I've been trying to tell you that you're the star witness in the Hightower case. What are you talking about? What were you, uh, where were you on the night of August 2nd? Oh, waiting tables at the restaurant. Can you prove it? Say, listen, if you get me into any trouble... Hey, listen, Ella, I won't get you into any trouble. 
Like I told you, you're going to get your pretty pan smeared all over the front pages of the evening newspaper. Oh, gee. And all you have to do is take a ride out to Redwood City with me. Well, that sounds fishy. It isn't. Did you ever know William A. Hightower? I never heard of him until that priest was murdered. Ever know any dark foreigners? Well, I knew a Mexican boy down in Los Angeles once, but he left town on me. He wasn't drunk on the corner of Ellis and Mason the other night, was he? Say, what are you trying to do? Make Hightower out a liar. Honest, you're the craziest yeah, The more I talk to you, the more I think I am. <laughs> Howard's waiting outside. Good. Now, boys, don't watch me or Buckley here. Just keep your eyes on Hightower and the girl. See if they recognize each other. Okay, Buckley. When I push the buzzer, bring her in. Ryan, get Hightower. Yes, sir. I'll beat it outside and be sure my little bird hasn't flown the coop. Okay. Honest, Sheriff, she wins the grand prize. Wait till you see this little bundle of stupidity. Boy, I must love my work to ride all the way out here with that number. <laughs> oh, I beat it before Hightower gets here. Right. Now, don't forget, boys, keep your eyes glued on this bird. Sit down, Hightower. You made up your mind to confess? I have nothing to confess. All right. You ever been arrested before, Hightower? No. No. You ever pulled any jobs before? What do you mean? Oh, burglaries or hold up? Oh, of course not. Burglaries or hold up? Oh, of course not. Well... Before we release you, just to make sure, or you, just to make sure, or you, just to make sure, I want to have some victims of recent holdups take a look at you. Well, don't mind, do you? No, so long as you let me out of here. And we'll see about that. I'll have the first victim brought in. Come in, miss. Now, is this the gentleman here? The one who held you up? Why, well, I've never been here. Watch it, dumbbell. Answer yes or no. No. Never seen him before? No. That's all. Come on, that's all he said. And do I get picture in the paper for that? Yeah. For, for that? Yeah. Scram. Hey, what's your idea of making a train steal out of me? Never see that a train steal out of me. Never see that girl before? No. Huh? You're positive? Positive. That's all I wanted to know. Well, in as much as you don't recognize her, Hightower, it may interest you to know that that girl is Ella Howard, your lady friend, whom you claim heard from a dark drunk foreigner about the grave of Father Haslam. Now, both of your alibis have been broken down. We have enough circumstantial evidence to put you away for good. Now, why don't you confess? You murdered Father Haslam and you buried his body at Salada Beach. Isn't that the truth? No, it's a lie. I'm innocent. You can't prove a thing. You're framing me. Go ahead and try me for murder. I'll beat your case. You never send me up. disappearance of Father Heston, William A. Hightower went on trial for his murder. In addition to the circumstantial evidence procured by officers and reporters, the state proved that the handwriting on the ransom note was Hightower's, and that timbers found at the grave stained with human blood proved Hightower's guilt more convincingly than his inconsistent defense argued for his innocence. And so on October 13th, the defendant was found guilty and was sentenced to life imprisonment in San Quentin Penitentiary, where he still is today. No longer William A. Hightower. No longer William A. Hightower. But merely convict number 34458. Have you wondered why Rio Grande calls its leading gasoline cracked? That unusual name accurately describes a patented refining process developed after years of research and the expenditure of millions of dollars by the Worldwide Sinclair Refining Organization, of which Rio Grande is the western subsidiary. Only Rio Grande is licensed to crack gasoline by the Sinclair process in the west. And so only in Rio Grande cracked gasoline can you get a gasoline refined by this advanced refining method. In Rio Grande's new cracking plant, the finest plant of its kind in America, the costly cracking process produces a gasoline that averages a 10-point higher anti-knock rating. A gasoline that so excels all others in fast starting, acceleration, speed, power, and mileage that it has been chosen through competitive tests 
to power the police cars and emergency engines of the West's leading city. Yet with all its advantages and superiority, you can get this same Rio Grande cracked gasoline from your neighborhood independent dealer at no extra cost. Those of you who have enjoyed calling all cars but have not experienced police car performance in your car, may I personally ask that you try Rio Grande cracked gasoline tomorrow. Frederick Lindsley saying good night for the Rio Grande Oil Company. <laughs>